Good morning or good afternoon, uh, whenever you're receiving this. Uh, welcome to our new A-level. Uh, this is A-level biology and this is our first topic called populations and sustainability. So today's lesson is firstly on population size. Um, the key learning outcomes are to understand the factors that determine the size of a population to know the significance of limiting factors in determining the carrying capacity of a given environment and the impact of these factors on the final population size. Resources and uh, any other information you need, you will find in the A-level textbook, Year 2, on pages 292 to page 294. So, as a starter, just to get your brains warmed up, uh, how many blue tits live in the school grounds? Have a guess. How many blue tits would live on the school grounds, the total grounds or area that the school grounds occupy? Will the number always be exactly the same number of blue tits? Explain your answer. List the factors that might affect blue tit numbers during a year under the headings abiotic and biotic. So the answer. A blue tit's territory is usually about 1.5 acres. So you probably on the school grounds get maybe about 10 blue tits covering the whole of the school grounds. Generally, the population will be very generally stable and it will generally be the same number. However, obviously in spring, if blue tits pair up uh, and they'll have chicks, they'll obviously increase. But these will have to fledge the nest and leave the territory and area as the school grounds will not be able to support any more than 10 blue tits. Some abiotic factors that might limit or affect the blue tit population could be water availability or even um, food, food availability. availability. As a biotic factor, other biotic factors would be predators in the area, uh, the amount of disease in the area, intra-specific competition from other blue tits and inter-specific competition from other birds. So then, the main topic for today, populations. As we all know, the human population is increasing at an exponential rate. The global population has grown from 1 billion in 1800s to near 7 billion in 2012, and it's predicted to reach 11 billion by the end of this century. Population growth like this cannot be sustained indefinitely as limiting factors such as the availability of food will prevent the human population rising above a certain level. A limiting factor is an environmental resource or a constraint that limits population growth. The graph that you can see in front of you is one of the classic growth curves of all natural populations and is often referred to as a sigmoid population growth curve. The population growth curve can be divided into three main phases. Any population that newly inhabits an area will undergo these three main phases. These are the lag phase, which is starting with slow growth. Next, the exponential or log phase of rapid growth. Then, thirdly, the stationary phase or stable state with no growth where births will equal deaths. There will be small fluctuations due to changes in factors such as food supply, which obviously um, different times of the year will depend on that. Okay, so this is what you'll need to copy down, either in your book or um, take a copy of it and annotate. 
So first of all, our first phase, phase one, the lag phase or the period of slow growth. Few individuals are still acclimatizing in this new environment. Therefore, the rate of reproduction is generally low. Small numbers of individuals that are initially present reproduce, therefore increasing the total population. As the birth rate is higher than the death rate, the population increases in size. Our second phase, the period of rapid growth or the exponential or log phase. This is where the number of breeding individuals increases. The total population multiplies exponentially. No constraints act to limit the population explosion. This is the state that the human population is in at the moment. We are increasing exponentially. And as I say, this will run out one day. In the exponential, resources are plentiful, so therefore breeding increases uh, exponentially. Conditions are good. The rate of reproduction is fast, and it fast outweighs mortality. And lastly, our final stationary phase. The stationary phase is a stable state of no growth. This generally is where the rate of reproduction equals the rate of mortality or birth rate equals death rate. It usually will stop at what we say the carrying capacity of the environment. The carrying capacity of the environment is the maximum a population size that an environment can support. And this will generally show small fluctuations due to changes in factors such as food supply and climate. For example, if there's a cold winter, then there won't be much food availability. So therefore, that could cause a decrease in the population. However, it's the same if there's a good hot summer, then more individuals could survive, therefore increasing the population slightly. Further population growth is prevented by external constraints. During this time, the population size fluctuates, but overall its size remains relatively stable. Birth rates and death rates are approximately equal. You'll have slight increases and decreases and can be accounted for by fluctuations in limiting factors, such as the presence of predators, disease, climate, etc. So just to, to outline the really important new word that you've learned about is carrying capacity. What is it again? It's the number of people, animals or crops or plants or a population of a species which a region can support without environmental degradation. Obviously, this applies to an area. So if for instance, rabbits ate all the grass and food in an area, then that area would no longer be able to support and it would exceed the carrying capacity. Most animals which can move would then migrate or move to a different area, therefore get more food. Therefore, carrying capacity, it applies to a region, an environment, a habitat or a place or island, or some fixed area. Limiting factors. In theory, if all resources were in plentiful supply, a population would continue to grow exponentially. However, this is rarely seen in nature. Instead, a short period of exponential growth occurs when conditions are ideal and the maximum growth rate is achieved. Limiting factors prevent further growth of a population and in some cases cause it to decline. Examples of limiting factors include competition between organisms for resources, the buildup of toxic byproducts of metabolism or disease. Limiting factors can be divided into abiotic and biotic factors. 
Some abiotic factors, these include non-living factors that can limit a population size. These could be temperature, light intensity, pH, the availability of water or oxygen, or humidity. The other limiting factors could be biotic factors. These living factors include predators, disease, competition, and food availability. You will find out in the next lessons how the competition is often considered to be the most important biotic factor in controlling population density. This can be intraspecific between uh, individuals of the same species, or it can be interspecific competition between individuals of different species. Another important variable that affects population size is migration. Just to remind you, if you can't remember, immigration is the movement of individual organisms into an area, increasing the population size. Um, example on Christmas Island, millions of red crabs migrate from forest to coast to reproduce. Immigration is moving into the area. And then emigration. Emigration is moving of organisms away from an area or out of the area, decreasing the population, e.g. the lemming migrates from areas of high populations. This You might have heard this also as well. Um, many people emigrate to Australia from in the UK. That means they're leaving the UK to go to Australia. Next, just to talk about something that's not in your book, but it makes sense. Density dependent factors. These are factors that have a larger effect the higher the population density is in an area. So if you think of, for example, an island which has 100 individuals or an island that has two individuals, disease would have more of an effect on the island with 100 individuals than the island that with two, okay? So what happens is, as the population increases, these density dependent factors have a larger effect. And you can actually see this now with um, New York, Manhattan, how bad the uh, coronavirus was and the outbreak. So just to summarize, density dependent factors these are factors that have a larger effect the higher the population density is in an area. These include competition, either intra-competition or inter-competition, the disease, food availability or predation. Then we come to density independent factors. Density independent factors are factors that have an effect on the whole population, regardless of its size, whether it's a thousand or two. These can dramatically change population size. These include earthquakes, fires, volcanic eruptions and storms and can remove whole populations of a species from a region. A key thing from this is density independent factors affect the population independently how big the size is. Uh, Australia, with its wildfires um, this, the start of this year, decimated, and that is a density independent factor. So that's it. So what you can do to summarise and uh, review and renew, uh, review your learning, could you please go to page 294 of the Year 2 textbook and answer the summary questions 1 to 3. If you finish that and have time, please go on to page 294 and answer the questions on the human populations. Thank you. This is the first lesson and now I'm done. Please give me feedback what you thought. This is also another useful kind of website um, and just gets you to realise where the human population is with its exponential growth. 
Um, this is called the Worldometer, and it quite gives you quite mind-blowing um, figures. So as you can see, the world population, 7.7 .7 billion births this year, over 50 million uh, births today, over 200,000 deaths today 92,000 so you can see the overall increase in just today's population all right check it out